Shut up, compressor. Hey everyone, Matt here with Duke's Models, and welcome to the next installment in the Tamiya 148th scale F4B Phantom build series. Now, our last time out, we had a lot of fun getting the stripey stripes done down here on the heat shielding, yay, as well as getting the panel lines washed and everything cleared, basically blending the decals and the carrier film into the surface. So we're good to go there. Everything is looking nice. And next up, we get to move into the fun stuff, the weathering, the corrosion control touch-ups, all that kind of stuff. But before I get into that, I want to deal with one little thing first. And that is the red light on the leading edge of the tail. Now, frustratingly, to me, it just leaves this as part of the tail. You know, it's, it's just a solid part. The Zuka Mira kits, at least the F4D that I've built, this is a clear inset, which is great and also terrifying at the same time because it's a little annoying piece to deal with, but it looks really good once it's in place. Uh, but it needs to be red and it's a pain in the ass to paint. And yeah, so I've gone ahead and I've very carefully masked this off being you know, extremely careful not to put any actual tape on any actual decal marking things, but still need to go ahead and get this sorted out. So let me go ahead and move the Phantom out of the way so it's not causing any problems. We're not getting any overspray on it. And I'm going to go ahead and where's my stir stick? Got to have the stir stick. So I've got a little batch of LP11 here all mixed up, ready to go. It's just to me, LP11 silver with a little bit of this leveling thinner in it. It's exciting. Just gonna dump some of this into the PS771. Get the pressure dialed in. Basically, this is just basing it for the clear red that'll come. In the past, I've been tempted to do this kind of thing with like you know, super vibrant chromes and things like that, but I've just kind of learned it's not really necessary. It's, it's almost overkill. So just a good old silver. We'll let that sit and come back with clear red. And that should get us where we need to be. All right, next up, it's time to get that lens hit with some, Jesus, the fucking timing of that thing. Every time I hit record, compressor's like, ah, I gotta talk, gotta fucking say words. Thanks a lot, shithead. All right, anyway. Anyway, where was I? Yeah, so now that the LP11 is down, it's time to go ahead and hit that lens with some Tamiya X27 clear red. This is mixed with some good old Mr. Leveling Thinner. You know, about what you would expect. The only, the one thing I will say is that red is my least favorite of these colors to shoot. Because it just seems so shitty with the opacity compared to the others. Like yellow, green, blue, they build up real fast. For some reason, the red seems just a bit more resistant to things. So we're going to give it a minute, let it dry, then hit it again. Maybe hit it like a thousand times. That might be part of it too, is with the greens and blues, I'm usually doing like armored cockpit glass. So you just want a little bit, right? And the clear for these lenses, no, you want it to be red. You don't want it to be orange. You don't want it to be like, you know, pale red. So it's supposed to look like a brake light basically. Okay, I think that looks pretty decent. Let's go ahead and... and 
there we have it. Clear red bullshit. Again, I think it looks okay. I think it would look better as a clear part, but you know, we're working with what we're working with here, right? Okay. So with that, we can now move on to doing some actual touch up work. Sweet. Okay, so now that the clear red is taken care of, it's time to put the tail aside and move on to touch-ups across the overall aircraft. Now these are going to apply to the top and to the bottom, to the white and all that good shit, and also to the underside of the wing tips that you can see here on the edges. I've got some really cool reference photos that show these things just roached to fuck. And so that'll be fun to play with for sure. So, here's the deal though. This is gray. This is the gray that I used to paint most of it. MRP 98. Different MRP 98s are slightly different in and of themselves, so there's that to contend with. But at the same time, I don't want to just put a bunch of the same paint on it because that's kind of boring. So, what I'm planning to do, because this is light gold gray, well, believe it or not, there's a color called dark gold gray. It's actually what is used on the cockpits, this tone. So a little bit darker, still that sort of warm tone though. So it'd be good for building up just a little bit of contrast in areas. And there are some areas on reference photos, you know, right up here around the nose and whatnot, where you can definitely see darker touch-up paints being used. Also, honestly, on the white, um, you know, I think this actually could play nicely. So we've got these two fuckers to play with. I'm also going to bring in some whites just to do some different touch-ups on the bottom because the bottom is its own white, etc. The other cool thing, well, aside from more grays, these are guns versions of the MRP colors, but the same ones, so light gold gray, dark gold gray. I've got some Tamiya LP34 that I can also bring into play. This is kind of their take-ish on light gold gray, essentially, close and so, you know, that can be another fun factor to bring in. I'm not going to use the SMS one because that's the one I used on Eagly. And to be honest, it is just so much lighter. And I kind of want to avoid something that is significantly lighter. So, yeah, just kind of stuff to grunge it up. But the really fun thing, the one I'm looking really forward to, is using some yellow zinc chromate. This is... Guns 352. I love this stuff. I need to obviously, you know, mix it up and all that shit. But it's a really, really fun color. And you don't see it much on the upper surfaces. I don't know why that's the case. But there are plenty of reference photos that show it on the underside. You know, particularly like on the... It hasn't lifted up right now because it's hard to get this thing back into the cradle here. But on the underside of the... You know, four edge of the wings. There's a you see it pretty commonly on there. You see it on the upturned wing tips, etc. I've got one where there's literally like battle damage to the wing tip, and it's kind of focused on that. But around it, you can see all the touch ups, and even over the national insignia and things like that, you find zinc chromate sprayed. So it's gonna be a lot of fun to uh, recreate some of that. But honestly, like I've been putting this off four months, maybe even a year, <laughs> to be honest. Um, no, because I set these things aside in May. So it's still been months, though, and a large part of it is because this part scares the fuck out of me. Um, how am I going to do this effectively in a way that I don't overcook it or that I don't undercook it? Granted, at the same time, I think, you know, I could probably say fuck it and just plow forward with the Phantom as it is right now and get to a pretty happy place. But... Let's have a little bit of fun first. Okay, so before I start committing paint to the plastic here, paint mule time. Now, yeah, it's nice to have an aircraft, but you know, the tank was closer and this is my lovely Sherman paint mule. So I need to steal that barrel for another project, by the way. But I figure if I just leave it on the mule, I'll always know where it is. But basically the plan is just to get in here, you know, do little close touch-ups like that. Some of them can be more faint. You know, if I want to do it along a line, something like that. So yeah, basically I'm heading in that direction. Okay, I think I can go ahead and start putting shit onto the plastic here. So I'm gonna start out kind of up in the top region here 
there are some areas where weird shit happened to some of the paint, and I think some of it just kind of, I don't know, I didn't cover as well. Maybe the uh, various clears kind of cooked it off a little bit, but there are definitely some areas where I can have a bit of a restoration. So. Is that fucking red tinted? All right, let me flush the airbrush again real fast. I think I might have a little bit of red still stuck in here causing problems. So time to turn it over to the to me an airbrush cleaner. Just really blow the fuck out of it. Okay, we're gonna try that shit again. All right, just to protect those numbers there. fuck <laughs> well it looks red to me I can't be sure 100% sure but it fucking looks red to me so here's what we're gonna do I'm gonna give it another clean we're gonna switch paints see if that changes shit because it's also I think what's going on also is just this gray is such a its own shit compared to other colors that it's really hard to get a feel for how other colors will go down on top of it so, I think that's causing some of the issues here. Maybe. Fuck it, who knows. Okay, so I've got the airbrush cleaned out. I think I've got everything sorted, and it's time to go ahead and get doing some touch-ups. And right now, this is just the light gold gray. There's nothing fancy going on. But there are a few areas where it's like, eh, you know, some shit went sideways. And so I want to kind of clean it up just a little bit. So that's what I'm doing here. Just trying to lay some groundwork for what's going to come. I have decided I think I need a few areas where it needs to be a little bit of lightening, but you know nothing, nothing significant. So mainly just to get a little bit of extra contrast out of things, right? Where this is cool, this would be hard as shit to show but is on the underside where the light gold gray really pops quite nicely. I think it works exceptionally well as a touch up. Will that keep it in focus? Maybe we'll see. Come on. Basically just trying to get some extra shit on here. Just to... Sorry, I'm trying to balance the, getting the airbrush close with getting this on camera because this is just like, just a hair's breadth too far back. I love how this shit sprays perfectly. Then I turn the camera on. It's like, eh, eh, it's not gonna work. Is it deal with that? You can kind of see though, we're getting some good vague touch-ups here. And the cool thing with the reference photos I have is these things aren't super opaque. You know, it's not like just a chunk of gray. It's very faint. You can see lines underneath some of the stuff. It's very obvious somebody's just like running through here with a rattle can and just slapping shit down. So that gives me hope that I can actually recreate some of it pretty decently. And then when I post it online at the end of the day, everything's like, it's overweathered. You can never have nice things because there's always somebody with 70 years of looking at airplane pictures, never seen panel lines or, you know, whatever. So maybe I'll dedicate this build to those types. I think that's a fair amount of single color touch-ups there. Yeah, I think at this point I'm pretty close to just saying fuck it, flip it over. 
and then when I start mixing other colors in, that's when I can come back and really go to town with the upper surfaces. Nothing's going to fly off here and make me regret doing this. So, same shit, different day. So you kind of get the idea is this is moving around sort of what to expect. Okay, so now taking a little bit of a break from doing the corrosion touch-ups across the airframe. You can see a little hint of one like right here and kind of down here. The light gold gray really uh, kind of all blends together, so it's gonna be a little bit of work bringing it out without overcooking it. But while that's happening, I also wanna deal with the radome. If you look at a lot of radomes, particularly from VMFA 323, but also just marine phantoms in general, the radome is usually pretty torn up. Some of them it's perfectly clean. A lot of them have little scuffs and nicks and things like that showing the uh, I think it's like a black rubberized component sort of underneath. So I've been trying to figure out how I want to tackle this for quite a while now. Uh, I don't feel like chipping is the best way just because, you know, you don't have the control with subtractive chipping, right? You put down like a black color and then you have to put down a shitload of this like white and off-white to cover it. Probably too much to really chip it effectively or with any real control unless you put on too much hairspray, in which case you have even less control. So I thought instead of that, I'm gonna try doing Uncle Night Shift's way. So basically that involves first using some white to build up like little chip areas on the radio. Once that's in place, then I can go in with darker tones sort of inside of that white. And hopefully that will give it some dimension just like it does on armor builds where you have the darker color, the lighter color, and then inside of that, the actual like chipped color. So that way it also helps it not seem like it's floating on top of the surface, but it actually makes it seem like it's underneath. It's a pretty cool trick. We're gonna see if it'll work with white. And for the white, I am going to be using, where the fuck did it go? I just used it, here it is. And for the white, I am gonna be using some Liquitex Titanium White Acrylic Ink. Why? Because it has good coverage, and it's, you know, because it's ink, you don't have to worry about that having like, you know, a raised little blob of paint getting in your way and ruining all your shit. So that's kind of the idea. So basically we just go in here, the brush, just kind of bring on some ink. Again, because it's ink, we don't have to be terribly picky about where it goes. This thing is supposed to look splotchy anyway, so yay. I think right there's a great spot because we've already got some kind of shit going on. There's like some weird blemish that happened down here. I don't know if I dropped this thing or something, but a good place to have a kind of a nastier gouge getting in the way. And some of these won't even actually end up getting chips on them. They'll just be their own sort of little bonus variations. But this way, again, this gives you more control than subtractive chipping does. It also avoids the feathered edge thing that you get with an airbrush, which is great for something like 
corrosion touch-ups, which were usually applied, you know, at, at this point in the game, applied with a spray can. The stuff happening up here on the radome is not that. So, whatever I can do to give it a little bit more than I will. Again, because it's ink, it dries right into it, so you don't have any of that height difference bullshit going on, or as minimal as we can possibly keep it. So this is a good example right here of what we're talking about. That scuffed up looking bullshit going on up there on the radome. I want to get some of that happening, so we're going to work on it. I'm also now curious. No. No, well, I was thinking maybe if I take the brush and get in here and do other shit, but no, man, that's that's playing with fire at that point. I just want to... This is looking pretty cool, though, on this side. I know it's probably barely coming through on the on the camera on the video but I think I might actually have something working here which is pretty neat yeah this is this is gonna work I think okay so the titanium white has had a little bit of time to dry and I think it's looking really good um, I really hope it you know can be seen effectively here with the camera, it's really tough to tell on my monitor because it's very glary. It really likes to say, hey, here's all the fucking highlights. But now, before I go really dark, like a dark chipping color, I'm going to go in with some Liquitex Neutral Gray 5. Again, sticking with the inks because they don't really penalize you for thickness. And all that I'm doing here, I've already touched in a little bit, but I'm just... Adding very slight amounts inside of the white. And at this point, I don't need this to be particularly clean. I just kind of want to get it down. And again, inside of the white. And I think that is actually going to fucking work. Holy shit. Going with the gray, because if you look at the reference photos, at least the ones I'm looking at, this is hardly a... Uh, hardly like a uniform thing going on with the chipping on the radome. And so, start with a gray color, you know, because there's definitely grays in there, and then add darker in places, just to, again, keep it, keep it moving, keep it interesting, not just have the same shit all over the place. Same reason I'm using multiple colors for the touch-ups on the jet itself. Now, the great thing about the acrylic ink, unlike a lot of other options here is that it doesn't tend to run not really at least yeah, you, you keep acrylic paint thin enough that you can apply it like this and it could run or it could just be basically transparent or you keep it thick and then it has you know, it has a z-axis at that point. It has height, which creates other problems. Whereas this, this is, you know, as thin as you can possibly get. It's ink. So... Slightly different. But because it doesn't move all that much, 
you have a lot of precision in how it goes down. I think this is going to work. And one interesting thing is, like, look how light this gray is, right? I mean, this is like the same same gray, basically, as the, you know, same tone as the fuselage. But it looks so much darker going down over the white and the radome tan. It's a good lesson learned lately with the uh, OV-10 Bronco, for sure. Just how much a light background influence the apparent darkness of certain colors. Okay, so after the initial work with the titanium white and the neutral gray, here is how the radome is looking. Now we still got a ways to go. I think in some ways it's a bit too orderly. I need to figure that out a bit. I think oils are going to play a role in blending some of this stuff together, but you know, just for setting the scene, I think we're in a pretty good place. Okay, for the next step in how this is going to go, I'm mixing some neutral gray, some black, the label's gone, sorry, black, literally just a drop of black, and a drop of transparent burnt umber. Now what this produces, instead of the gray that we were working with before, which is, you can see what it looks like now that it's had a chance to dry out, we've got more of a, like a dirty, warm brown gray thing. Next layer in scuffing up, essentially. Now this will help us kind of further define and provide a bit more variety to these scuffs. Basically, when somebody looks on this, they're not going to be seeing, you know, essentially two colors. It's going to be multiples. And hopefully, when oils come in on top of this, they'll further sort of confuse the situation, provide more air cover, so to speak. So basically, this is kind of the idea, just very slowly going and kind of boost these a bit. We're going to keep shifting colors and whatnot too to keep it all lively and fun. Okay, so about midway through doing the next round of the chipping, I decided that there was maybe a bit too much on here. Um, you know, just going back and looking at references, and I think I kind of both slightly overdid it, but also did that human thing of trying to be random and ended up having things looking a bit too orderly and a bit too spaced out. So fortunately, inks are super easy to remove. You just get some, uh, at least what's called in the U.S. here, Formula 409. It's a cleaning solution. Good for cleaning carpets and shit like that. But also good for removing inks from paint without really dislodging any of the rest of it. So removed a big old chunk in here, kind of, you know, essentially all over the place on the port side as well. You can see there's still some in there. You can also see here the different colors. So there's some of that darker warm brown gray and there's some of the lighter gray and there's the white outlines. And I think once this gets a clear coat on it, and once it gets some additional oils to kind of support the radome being all grunged up, it'll hold up quite nicely. Okay, so now that the radome is in a pretty happy place for the moment, it's time to move on to the next and final stage of touch-ups. Some yellow zinc chromate, or GUNS C352. Now this came in a set, but I believe that the C352 is now available as its own thing as well. So, hurrah! They finally realize selling the super useful colors in a box set is kind of annoying because people like those colors. So 
So this is something that I saw on reference photos and just kind of had a little, you know, jump for joy moment with, right? I'm just gonna get this where I can, where I can get to it properly. So something that you see in a lot of the reference photos where you get close enough to see is the use of zinc chromate kind of over other touch-ups. I'm going to try adding a little bit more thinner because I don't know what the hell's going on here. I'm using Mr. Rapid Thinner to avoid spidering, but at the same time, it kind of needs a spray. Getting a little bit of hesitation in the airbrush, which is never any really, never good for this kind of small controlled spraying shit. All right. No, it's not over everything. It's just over a couple of different details, small things here and there. All right, so I've added a lot more Mr. Rapid Thinner to it. It's still spraying a bit thicker than I would like, so. There we go, I like that. Cool. A little something different, make it more interesting. I want to flip this guy over, but the tape that I've got holding the masking canopy in place is getting to the failure point after like a year. Who would have imagined? All right. We're not going to do anywhere close to all of them, just a couple of areas. And again, this shit really honestly won't matter at the end of the day because you're not going to see a lot of the underside anyway. Okay, so there we've got some various bits of chromate scattered around. And with that, I think I'm ready to call the touch-ups uh, pretty much wrapped up along with the lovely fun up on the radome. So that's kind of what we're looking like at the moment. Next up is going to be additional weathering. So. At this point, I need to start busting out oils to work on, you know, the walkways, the wing root area here where you can see a lot of gunk and grime and things like that. Basically, so far, I've focused on the shit that, you know, oh, something got dinged and it got spray painted over. Oh, the radome got chipped. These are damage and repair, essentially. Um, they are structural, not structural weathering, surface, you know. These aren't environmental weathering. This isn't accumulation of fluids and dust and grime. This is stuff that has been damaged and fixed. This is stuff the maintenance crews, at least radome back, have taken care of. Up at the radome, this is the, the coating and the paint and whatnot chipping off. So overall, I think it's in a good spot. Uh, 
And I'm going to go ahead and call this episode a wrap. And when we come back, it'll be time to play with all of those fun oils and shit. And I think we're getting close to being able to take this off and, you know, start putting on the real things before too much longer. So, yay. That'll be fun. Anyway, thanks for following along with this installment, with the touch-ups, with the radome, all that good business. Hope you all are still enjoying this. I'm hoping at this point to get the uh, to get the F4 done by the end of the year. I think it's doable. It's already pretty far along as it is. And with that, thanks for watching. Uh, as always, if you want to get episodes a bit early, there's my Patreon page at patreon.com slash dukesmodels. And I should add, now that they have updated the app and it no longer sucks complete ass, I might actually be uh, posting a bit more, you know, kind of exclusive shit on there from the phone because it's actually convenient and not a giant pain in the ass now. So, anyway, that is that. Hope you all have a good one. This is right around Thanksgiving that I'm filming this, so if you are in the U.S., enjoy Turkey Day. And I will catch you all later.